L'Hopital's rule is one of the kind of the mainstays on the HL exam. You will for sure see an L'Hopital's rule coming up in one form or another. And these are the most easy to do, they're the most predictable to do. I want you to be successful with these. Just a quick reminder though, limits are what? Y value. So when I'm finding a limit, I'm finding a Y value. So don't make these more mystical than they are. You're still just finding Y values when X approaches something, or N approaches something. I'm gonna go back in time a little bit. What if I took the limit as N approached five of, oh, let's go um, uh, N plus three. What would that limit be? Eight, right? So you stick in a five and you get five plus three equal to eight. So everything seems fine. Uh, seems like an easy thing to do. We can't run into any trouble, right? N approaches five. Well, what happens when I go N squared minus 25 over N minus five? Put the five in this time and see what happens. So you get uh, five squared minus 25 over five minus five, and what's 25 minus 25? Zero, and five minus five? Zero. <laughs> so what is zero over zero? Well, zero over zero is 10. Do you believe it? I'm gonna show you, zero over zero is 10. I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to say the limit and approaches infinity. Factor this n plus five, n minus five, right? A difference of two squares, uh, n minus five. What cancels? Oh, okay, so this cancels out and you get the limit as n approaches five of n plus five and what's that gonna be? 10. So zero over zero equals 10. Did you know that? You learn something every day. Well, not always. Sometimes it could be equal to three. Or once I saw it equal to 52, but that was a long time ago. But uh, zero over zero actually could be anything. And the reason it's anything has to do with uh, graphically, if you graphed this n squared minus 25 over n minus five, this is what you're going to get. A straight line, n plus 5, but at 5, there's a hole. Remember that? Removable discontinuity. How big is that hole, by the way? Yeah. Yeah. I, math teachers don't like me to say this, but that hole isn't there. What do you mean it's not there? You can't have n equal to five, right? That hole isn't there. How many points are there from zero, to x equals zero to 10? How many points are there between my two fingers? A million, infinite, right? How about between here and here? How many points are there? Infinite. How many of these are not there? One. So one out of an infinite number of points is what? Zero. So that hole isn't there. you believe me? It looks so big, though. Well, we drew it that way, but it's, it's really, if you were to plot it in a calculator, it would be a straight line, because one point out of an infinite number isn't there. And so this is, isn't there, which is kind of, kind of intriguing. But could you see this point moving anywhere? Could this point be anywhere along this line? And that's why zero over zero could be anything. Does that make sense? All right. So uh, here's what here's what happened. Is any time you get an indeterminate form like uh, zero over zero, you're going to be able to use a technique called L'Hopital's rule. And L'Hopital's rule is a special rule that only works if you've identified an indeterminate form, or IF, okay? And you're gonna memorize these seven. The first two are pretty easy. Zero over zero, infinity over infinity. Those are pretty obvious. 
Infinity minus infinity doesn't happen a lot. Zero times infinity happens sometimes. Infinity to the zero, a few times. Zero to the zero. One to the infinity is the most common one of all those uncommon ones. Uh, that one to infinity could be E. Okay, Justin, you with us here? Copy these down, please. So uh, I'm going to prove this one, and I want you to write this proof down because it's pretty ingenious. This is uh, Lopatel's rule himself. He proves this one. The limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x. Kind of like what I did with the uh, x squared minus 25. Well, for this proof, is it legal for me to write the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus 0? Is that legal? Or did I cheat? I can do that, can I? And notice what 0 is equal to. In one case, 0 In one case, 0 is f of c. Another case, 0 is g of c. Okay? So that's so what? Well, since we have the special case when g of zero, g of c and f of c equals zero, we have this. Can I take this and this and divide by two? Is that legal? Top and bottom. It's like multiplying by two over two. Is that legal? How about twelve over twelve? How about twelve plus um, x? I can do that too, can't I? So how about, since I'm doing that, why don't I just put in uh, x minus c? Just because I know it's going to work out. That's like multiplying by x so at minus c over x minus c, or just multiplying by 1, which is totally legal and totally helpful because the limit as x approaches c do you remember back in your calculus days what f of x minus f of c over x minus c is? What is it? Yes, the derivative at... It's the derivative, the blue one is the derivative of f. And what is the yellow one, g of x minus g of c over x minus c? derivative of g. Ta-da! L'Hopital rule right there. This means that if you have an indeterminate form, and you have to show that to me first, okay, you can take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom and see what the new limit is. Now this is not the quotient rule. You don't have to do Heidi ho ho you don't have to do that stuff. But you do have to you do have to take the derivative of the top, the derivative of the bottom. You have to write it function over function in order for this to work. Now, just to kind of remind you of this, um, what's the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus 2 over x? What is that? 6 over 2, which is what? 3, right? Now, let's say we blindly did L'Hopital's rule for this. We rewrote this as derivative of the top was 2x, derivative of the bottom is 1. I put in a 2 here, I get 4. What did I do wrong? The limit is supposed to be 3, and I got 4. What did I do wrong? Subtle. This can't be used because this is not an indeterminate form. It only works if it's an indeterminate form. So let's try one. Let's try the limit as x approaches 0, sine x over x, the most famous of all applications of local algebra. So if I, you remember studying this with geometrically, did he show you this geometrically? The sectors and areas of certain, no, okay, but you can prove this one using, using geometry. I love doing that, but you can prove it a lot faster this way. I'm going to put in a zero, 
and I get sine of zero is zero, put in a zero, zero. Is this an indeterminate form on my list of seven? So you write indeterminate form, and I'm not making this up. IB and AP require, if you're doing a, a limit with L'Hopital's rule, you have to write which indeterminate form and that it is one, or they won't give you credit. If you can get the right answer, they'll take a point or two off. That's the easiest thing to do, too. Just plug them in. So this gives us a ticket to the show. We can take the limit as x approaches zero. We can take the derivative of the top. What's the derivative of sine? Oops, sine of x. And what's the derivative of x? One. Now put a zero in. What's the cosine of zero? One over one. And there is the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x using L'Hopital rule. Okay, let's try the second one here. Second one, you have one minus cosine x over x. So let's test it to see if we can use L'Hopital's. So you're gonna have one minus the cosine of zero is one over zero. Is this going to be zero over zero? Uh-huh, so it's an indeterminate form. And so then when I do this, I can write the limit x approaches zero. Zero, what's the derivative of cosine? Negative, a negative sine. So it's gonna be sine x, derivative of x is one. Put a zero in here. Now it's just gonna be what? Zero over one or zero. So that's that one. Seem easy? Okay, uh, let's do um, these two real quick. Uh, this is a tricky one. Natural log of x, uh, as you approach zero from the plus side, this is going to be negative infinity. And when you approach uh, sine zero, I think this one's going to be positive infinity. And so infinity over infinity, whether it's plus or minus, is that going to be an indeterminate form? Yeah, so you're right, indeterminate form. So that allows us to get to play Watch the show here, x approaches zero from the plus. Derivative of natural log, negative one over x. Uh, derivative of cosecant, uh, uh, cosecant is going to be negative cosecant x, cotangent x. So we're gonna do a little bit of work here at the limit as x approaches zero from the plus side. Cosecant is one over sine. Cotangent is cosine over sine. So notice the sine squares are gonna to come to the top and the cosine's gonna be on the bottom and the x is gonna be on the bottom. What happens when I put a zero in this time? What's the sine of zero? Uh-oh, what's the bottom? So what does that mean? You have to do it again. And sometimes L'Hopital's, you have to do it two or three times uh, to get it to work out. Wanted to show you that. Yeah. The last one, I gotta show you this one. The limit as x approaches zero from the plus side, uh, you're gonna write natural log of x. Everybody got that? But you need to, well, let's put the values in first. This is going to be uh, zero times infinity, actually negative infinity. What's uh, zero times negative one? Zero. So this is like zero times infinity. Is that an indeterminate form? One of my least common ones, but it does happen sometimes. So let me show you the technique for dealing with these when you run into them with your, your homework x times natural log of x doesn't work in this format because we've got to have a function over a function. So what could we do with this x so that it turns into a function down here? Yeah, this one over x. Is that okay? Is that all right? It's still x times x. So we could rewrite this as the limit as x approaches zero from the plus side, uh, natural log of x, x to the negative one. The derivative of this 
is 1 over x. The derivative of this is negative 1 over x squared. This turns into negative x squared over x. And what simplifies out? Yeah, so it's just going to be negative x. Put a 0 in. This is equal to 0. So this has a, a 0 limit. Not very pleasing because that, you know, 0 times infinity to 0. But that's how that one works. For your homework, you're going to finish day three. You're going to do one, two, three, four, five, and you're going to do um, two of those, A and B, for each one. And just start working on the Lopatals. You're going to have a quiz on Friday with the Lopatals. Make sure that you can do Lopatals rule.